Hello again. A few weeks ago, Jordan Peterson announced that he's joining the Daily Wire network, which you may know as the home of such conservative personalities as Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. It came as a bit of a surprise to me and to those of us familiar enough with Jordan Peterson to know how careful he's been not to identify himself as a conservative. But that's not even the weirdest thing about this career move. He started releasing videos in a new format. He now speaks from a script, he films in a studio, and he's delivering his message in a kind of stern, serious tone of voice. All of that conversational ad-libbed, ram slightly rambling storytelling and the way he used to pick through subjects with a level of uncertainty, uh, which kind of endeared him to his early audience, it seems to be completely gone. I would have thought that if he were going to radically change like this, it would be as a consequence of his harrowing health troubles in 2020 and 2021, but that seems to have left him relatively unscathed in the long term compared to what a few weeks at the Daily Wire has done to him. As disappointing as it is to see an intellectual I respect lose some of his charm and his relatability, it has helped me to understand more about what made him likeable in the first place, and what makes self-created videos like YouTube, Twitch and TikTok popular as a medium. These video social medias, which I'm just going to call YouTube for the sake of brevity, <laughs> there are lots of things that a YouTube video can be, and lots of entertainment appetites that it can serve, but where YouTube really shines is how personal it can be. As well as hearing someone's ideas, you might also see the person who actually had those ideas or who's telling you about them. You might see their office or their bedroom that they're filming in. YouTube videos and podcasts are often a single person endeavor where they get to make all of the creative decisions themselves and to set up the audio and the camera and to upload them and create their own thumbnails and titles. And although that's not always the case, it, that is what I think of when I think of YouTube videos are these one person operations like what I'm doing now. And in Jordan Peterson's case, it felt like we were also getting to see him working through the ideas in real time. He has such a wide pool of knowledge and experience from his clinical practice and from reading and uh, all of the different jobs he's done over the years that he could just sort of draw on these different experiences. For me, it kind of felt like watching a craftsman creating something beautiful in real time, the way that it was, that you could see his brain working as he was talking. And he was very good at it as well. There was no finesse or sophistry to it. It was just genuine charisma and honesty. And it felt very real. It didn't feel packaged or or artificial. It didn't feel like I was being fed something. It was just a sort of spectacle to to, to watch and not something that was actively trying to persuade me of anything in particular. In some ways it seems that the amount of work that goes into the presentation, it does have an increase in the visual appeal and the audio quality, but there is something lost in the in how relatable it is. Now that Jordan Peterson is filming videos in a studio and that there's multiple angles of cameras with him, I kind of can't help thinking about the possibility that he's filmed multiple takes of this video and that he's trying to get the, his, his severe tone of voice just right. I'd much rather see him pointing the camera up his nose and fumbling with the start button at the start of every video like Simon Webb does, if it just meant that I could see him truly expressing himself and all of his weird thoughts. Having a rough presentation, like in History Debunked, makes it feel like there's nowhere to hide and that he has nothing to prove. There's nothing for sale and the viewer is just invited to listen or to go away according to your level of interest in the subject. Thinking back to the kinds of videos that John Peterson made that made him famous in the first place, he did have a few of these more scripted, more serious videos, but I think it, it would have meant nothing if he hadn't had that back catalogue of lectures about uh, Pinocchio and about uh, <laughs> those hours and hours of um, just him standing in front of a classroom walking back and forth with with just a lot to say talking to his students. I think we in his earlier audience really enjoyed the, the way that he went off topic and the way that he would make jokes and laugh at himself and put in these little anecdotes about his own experiences. 
And if I really put my mind to it, I think it has been a few years since I've seen him do a really good lecture in that style that I uh, really enjoyed in uh, 2017 and 2018. I'm going to keep an eye on his channel and continue to uh, watch what he puts out just to see where it goes. But my instinct is to say that this might be the beginning of the slow decline of Jordan Peterson mania. <laughs> Either that or he's getting ready to run for Prime Minister in Canada. But what do you think is next for Jordan Peterson? I know not all of my <laughs> subscribers were a fan to begin with, so I guess they're going to be in the comments saying, I told you so. But let me know in the comments either way. Um, do you think I should get a set? I could pile up some logs or get a, a fireplace, put an animal skin on the floor, sit in an armchair with a, a glass of wine or something. What do you think? I think the staircase has kind of become a brand for me, but I do sometimes long to escape into a full-sized room. <laughs> I don't think I'm in any danger of the Daily Wire knocking on the door to uh, to ask me to sell out for, for their network, but uh, I think I might be sorely tempted if they did. ...or acknowledging that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Remember to watch Women's Hour Fridays now on this channel. And I hope you'll join us. Say hello in the chat if you're joining live or catch up later and watch it as a podcast. I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.